Today we're going to talk about a really important number theoretic function that has lots of nice famous results due to Ramanujan. And well, there's this great number theory book that covers, well, the results that we're going to see today, as well as a ton of other stuff called Number Theory in the Spirit of Ramanujan. I urge you guys to check it out. I really, it's one of my favorite books. Okay. So let's see how this function is defined. So it's known as Ramanujan's tau function, and it's defined via its generating function. So we are here we have the sum as n goes from 1 to infinity of tau of n times q to the n is equal to q times the product as m goes from 1 to infinity of 1 minus q to the m raised to the 24. And you might say, well, what's that 24 doing there? Well, I mean, 24 shows up a lot of different places. And maybe one of the most interesting things is that 24 is 26 minus 2, and 26 is a critical dimension in super string theory. So anyway, I'd say that there is some sort of deep connection between lots of different areas in math and, well, modern physics linked between this number or through this number 24. Okay, so anyway, let's do some values of this tau function before we look at maybe one of the simplest classic results. So let's observe that tau of 1 is equal to 1. I don't really think we need to do anything to explain that. Notice here we're multiplying q into a bunch of binomials that are all being multiplied to each other. And, well, the only way to achieve q to the first power is to take this q and then, well, all of these ones after that. So there's only one way to get at it. Okay, so now let's maybe look at tau of 2, but observe that that is the coefficient of q to the 1 of this remaining product right here. So notice it's the coefficient of q squared of the whole thing, but if we get rid of this q, it'll be just the coefficient of q to the 1 of what remains. But observe that q to the 1 only shows up in one of these terms that remains. After m gets beyond 1, we have 1 minus q squared, 1 minus q cubed, and so on and so forth. And those won't contribute anything to 1 minus q to the first power. So that means here we have the coefficient of 1 minus q to the 24. But there's actually a defined number for this type of thing, this coefficient of something in a binomial expansion, and that's a binomial coefficient. Since we have a minus sign here, this will be minus 24 choose 1. In other words, it'll be minus 24. So if we're keeping track up here, we'll have the sum as n goes from 1 to infinity of tau of n q to the n. So we'll have q and then minus 24q squared, and then we'll have some other stuff that we'll calculate as we move forward. Okay, let's calculate maybe two more of these values. So let's do tau of 3. So that's going to be the coefficient of q squared. Again, we don't need q cubed because we can get rid of this q. And then we'll have 1 minus q to the 24 times 1 minus q squared to the 24. So we don't need anything past that because those will all be 1 minus q cubed, q to the fourth, so on and so forth. Those won't contribute anything to the q squared. Okay, so let's observe that we can take q squared from this first term and 1 from this second term. But the number of ways to do that is 24 choose 2. That's because, well, there's 24 choose 2 ways to get a q squared here, and only one way to choose a 1 from the second term. And those are both attached to a plus because we've got even powers of q. So otherwise, we could take a 1 from this first term and a q squared from the second term, but that's going to give us minus 24 choose 1, kind of for the same reason that we got minus 24 choose 1 for this first bit. But let's see, that's going to be 276 minus 24, which is 
252. So here we have plus 252 Q cubed. That's our next value. Now let's do one more value. So tau of four. So that's going to be the coefficient of Q cubed of one minus Q to the 24, one minus Q squared to the 24, and then one minus Q cubed to the 24. So now we're going to play the same kind of game that we did before. So we could take Q cubed from this first bit, that'll be minus 24 choose 3, and then 1's from the rest of them. That'll just be 1 and 1. You could take a Q from here and a Q squared from here, but there are exactly 24 choose 1 ways of doing that for each of those. So 24 choose 1 times 24 choose 1. Or finally, we could take a Q cubed from this last bit, but that's going to be attached to another 24 choose 1. Here we've got minus 24 choose 1, and I should point out we get a plus sign for this middle term because we have two minus signs. But in the end, that's going to be minus 2024, the current year, and then plus 24 squared minus 24. So adding all that up, you get minus 1,472. 1,472 is my birth year. That is an interesting thing that popped up. So here we have minus 1,472 Q cubed, and then that's going to obviously keep going and going and going. And that should be a Q to the fourth. Okay, nice. So now that we've done some values of this function, let's prove a classic result. Now we're going to look at a classic result due to Ramanujan about this tau function. And that is tau of 7n is congruent to 0 mod 7. So what does that mean? Well, that means if I input a multiple of 7 into tau, I get out a multiple of 7. Being congruent to 0 mod 7 means that I'm a multiple of 7. Furthermore, putting 7 times n in is sort of obviously putting a multiple of 7 in. So, for instance, tau of 7, tau of 14, tau of 21, tau of 35, all of those are multiples of 7. Okay, so we're going to use a fairly powerful tool here that's related to something called the Jacobi triple product, which actually I made a video on a long time ago related to a course that I taught, and that is this thing called Jacobi's identity which says that if you take the infinite product m equals 1 to infinity of 1 minus q to the m cubed, you get the sum as n goes from 0 to infinity of, let's see, that should be minus 1 to the n times 2 to the n plus 1 times q to the n times n plus 1 over 2. Okay, so let's see how we can use this. So let's start by taking 1 minus q to the m raised to the seventh power. So we're not to the step where we use this yet and see what happens there. So I'm going to expand all of this out in the details, but there's actually a trick that we could use to skip a bunch of steps. But anyway, we're not going to use that. So this is 1 minus q, 1 minus 7 times q to the m, and then next will be plus. 21 times q to the 2m minus 35 times q to the 3m plus 35 times q to the 4m minus 21 times q to the 5m plus 7 times q to the 6m and then minus q to the 7 times m. And the important thing to notice here is that all of these coefficients of the middle terms are multiples of 7. In other words, they're all congruent to 0 mod 7. So that means if we take this binomial expansion and reduce it mod 7, we have 1 minus q to the m raised to the 7th power is congruent to 1 minus q to the 7m mod 7. Seven. So we're doing what seems like a sketchy binomial expansion, but in fact, because we're reducing mod 7, it is true. Okay, great. So, but we don't have 1 minus q to the m to the 7, we have 1 minus q to the m to the 24. So let's see how we can use that. 
So one minus Q to the M to the 24. So let's observe that that's one minus Q to the M cubed times one minus Q to the M to the seven all cubed. So I think it's pretty clear how that's going down. It's because 21 plus three is 24. But now we can use our result on this inner term and we'll have this is congruent to one minus Q to the M cubed times one minus Q to the seven M cubed. And this is all occurring mod seven. So now let's look at this little bit right here. And this is this one minus Q to the seven M raised to the third power and observe that here we have Q raised to the seven times something in every term of this expansion. That's because the variable here is Q to the seven M. Okay, good. So that means we just need to focus on this first term because, well, this is not going to contribute to whether or not we're looking at some sort of input, which is a multiple of seven. It will keep us at a multiple of seven, I should say. Okay, nice. So now let's see what we can do with this Jacobi identity here. So this is going to be congruent to the sum as n goes from zero to infinity. We have minus one to the n times two n plus one times q to the n times n plus one over two. And this is all cubed. And then we have one minus Q to the seven M. This is all cubed. This is all occurring mod seven. So observe that that's simply this one minus Q to the M to the 24 term, but that's not exactly what we have. We have Q times an infinite product of such terms. So let's maybe start a new board with well, the infinite product version of what we have right here. Okay, so this is where we left ourselves off. So I'm gonna do one step before we make our final argument, and that is to multiply this Q through. So that means here we have tau of n is congruent to this sum as n goes from zero to infinity of minus one to the n times two n plus one times Q raised to the one plus n or one plus n times n plus one over two, and then this whole sum is cubed. And then after that, we have this product as m goes from one to infinity of one minus q to the seven m cubed. And this is not equality. This is all in this like equivalence class mod seven. Okay, great. And oh, this is not tau of n, that was sloppy, this is the generating function for tau of n. Okay, good. So now what we wanna do is look at powers of Q to the seven on the left-hand side. So observe that if, if we do that, so we want, I should say, the following sort of type of sum. And that would be this sum as, I'll call it K goes from one to infinity of tau of seven K times Q to the seven K. But the only way to achieve that, well, notice that all of these expand with powers of Q to the seven. So this is gonna be one, and then it'll be minus three to Q to the seven, and then plus something times Q to the 14, and so on and so forth. So, in other words, every exponent there is a multiple of seven. So if we can get multiples of seven here, then that's gonna be all of the things necessary to build this sum right here. So let's like rephrase this as the following question. When is the exponent of Q a multiple of seven in this case. But observe in the language of modular arithmetic, that's gonna be equivalent to saying one plus n times n plus one over two is congruent to zero mod seven. But now 
just moving some things around, that's equivalent to saying that n times n plus 1 over 2 is congruent to, well, negative 1 mod 7, but negative 1 is 6 mod 7. So here we have this is 6 mod 7. But now we can multiply both sides by 2 by clearing the denominator. That division by 2 can really be thought of as multiplication by 2 inverse. So let's see, if you multiply 6 by 2, you get 12, but 12 is 5 more than 7, so it's 5 mod 7. So observe that this is if and only if we have n times n plus 1 congruent to 5 mod 7. But then how do we solve this for n? Well, I think your best bet is just to make a simple chart and test all possible values. So let's see, I think we could probably test the values over here. Let's say we have inputs n, and then here we're gonna have n times n plus one, and just keep in mind that we're working mod seven. So let's see, we'll input one, two, three, four, and five. Notice that observing zero is not super interesting because that'll give us obviously um, zero mod seven, which is not five mod seven. Inputting six is also not interesting because That'll also give us zero mod seven, not five mod seven, because six plus one is seven, which is zero. So let's see, inputting one, we'll get one times one plus one. So that's one times two, which is two. So two is, or one is not a solution. Inputting two gives us two times three, which is six. That's also not a solution. Inputting three gives us three times four, which is 12. Oh, but 12 is five mod seven. So that means that n congruent to 3 mod 7 is a solution. Let's see if there are any other solutions. So let's take 4. If you put 4 here, 4 times 5 is 20. But let's see, 20 is 6 more than 14, so that makes that 6 mod 7. And then inputting 5 in there, well, you get 5 times 6, which is 30, but that's going to be 2 mod 7 because it's 2 more than 28. So observe that the only way to get 5 mod 7 is with the number 3. So that means we do have, this is, um, if and only if n is congruent to 3 mod 7. But notice if we multiply n by 2, then we have to multiply 3 by 2. We get 6, add 1. Well, that'll give us 7, which is 0 mod 7. So this is equivalent to having 2n plus 1 congruent to 0 mod 7. So that actually is all we need to do because observe that when the exponent here is a multiple of 7, then this coefficient is also a multiple of 7. But that means whenever we achieve an exponent that's a multiple of 7 in the end, the coefficient will also be a multiple of 7, meaning this whole sum collapses to 0 mod 7, and that proves our result. And that's a good place to stop.